Good day. Welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics where it is easier than you think. I'm Graham Henderson and this is the second video in explaining different methods of how to factorise quadratic equations apart from the cross method. In my last video I looked at the decomposition method. I'm not quite sure what method this is called but you'll either recognise it or not. Um, gee, that's a profound statement isn't it? Uh, if this is one you've been taught at school, then I hope this helps you understand it better. And if it's one that you haven't been taught but you like, then by all means practice it. It's still a variation on the same theme. Now, before showing you what happens here, I'm going to show you what happens on the side. It's still the same as we use for all the other methods. We go 7 times minus 3, minus 21, and we write the plus 4 underneath. Now, my little twist on this, if you look at the video 2 before this one, uh, I explain why I do what I do and create this little loop here. We're looking for this product and this sum. And we're asking what numbers multiply to make 21. Notice I didn't say minus 21, I just said 21. And they're 4 apart or they have a difference of 4. And I find that using this sign with this number helps me find the numbers first, and then I worry about the plus and minus signs. Trust me, you'll get used to it. What numbers multiply make 21, and they're 4 apart? Well, 3 and 7. They're 4 apart, and they multiply to make 21. How do I get a plus 4 with a 3 and a 7? Well, the big number has to have the same sign. So that gets me up in the positive end of the number line. So whether I add or subtract 3, I'm going to stay with a positive number. And to get to plus 4 from plus 7, I have to go down 3. I have to subtract 3. That's our analysis done. That's exactly what we did in the previous video, and it's what I'm going to do in the next one, and possibly the one after that as well. This doesn't change. What changes is how we show our work and how we think our way through the problem. Now, this is quite unlike the decomposition method of the last video. This one, we actually go straight to a factored form. But because we don't know which of the factors is going to have the 7x in, you notice 7 is prime, uh, we write it in both. But 7x times 7x is 49x squared, so we overcome that by dividing our result by 7. So 7 will divide into one of these, and we'll just end up with 7x times x is 7x squared. So that's taken care of. It's a bit weird, but believe me, this works. So this one, for example, we would start off by writing 12x, 12x, divide by, you guessed it, 12, simply because we don't know how this 12 has to be broken up. And here we would have 8x, 8x, and 8. Now, some students love this method. I've shown some students and they've thought, my goodness, I wish my teacher showed me that before. Other students think, ah, I prefer my own technique. This is why we're all individuals, or at least it's a consequence of our all being individuals. If you like this, you use it. If you don't, use one of the other methods. We take these two numbers and we write them in. The order does not matter. There it is. We write in the minus 3 and the plus 7. And all that remains, there's only one more step remaining, and that's to divide this 7 in. Now, 7 does not divide into this factor. It does divide in the 7x, but not the minus 3. But you notice, it does divide over here. So, we leave the first factor untouched. And we divide the 7 into this and make it 7 times smaller. 7 into 7x goes x and 7 into 7 goes 1. And that is factorised. The beauty of this method is it takes two lines of work. There's your first line, first line, second line. First line, we're going to have our answer here. Let's 
go to the engine room if you like and see how to calculate our numbers. 12 times minus 1 is minus 12, minus 4 underneath, and I ask what numbers multiply to make 12 that are 4 apart? Uh, 6 times 2. 6 times 2 is 12, 6 and 2 are 4 apart. It's only at this stage, now that I actually have the numbers, that I work out whether they're plus or minus. The big number has to have the same sign. You notice I repeat this often. Students get the hang of it. <laughs> if I start at minus 6, I have to go up 2 to get to minus 4. So that's the combination we're after, and we put them in. Again, the order doesn't matter because they're both 12 x's, so it really doesn't matter where they go. Minus 6 and plus 2. And now we have a little bit of a problem that 12 doesn't go properly into this because 6 is too small and it doesn't go into here because 2 is too small. But if I remove that 12 and replace it with 6 times 3, sorry, 6, good goodness, that's having a bit of a moment there. 6 twos are 12. The 6 will divide into this one, this factor, and the 2 will divide into this factor. 6 into this factor goes. 6 into 12 is 2, 6 into minus 6 is minus 1, and 2 into this, half of 12x is 6x, and half of 2 is 1. There it is, finished. It's quite a nice little method. I quite like this one. This one, let's go, let's speed up a little bit. 8 times plus 5 is plus 40. We've got a minus 13 underneath. Now these numbers normally would cause students quite some concern. But notice that things change a bit when we do this. We're asking what numbers multiply to make 40 that add up to 13. Well, it's not 4 and 10. 4 10s make 40. 4 plus 10 is 14. It's very, very close to 4 and 10. What do you think? 3 doesn't go. 5 goes into 40. How many times? 5 eighths? Well, believe it or not, 5 and 8 also add to 13, so there are two numbers. Now, how do I get a minus 13 with a 5 and an 8? The big number has to be negative, and if I start at minus 8, I must go down another 5. In other words, they both, both must be negative to get me down as far as minus 13. So I write them in, minus 5, minus 8. And in this case, I don't have to split the 8 up to divide a bit each way. The 8 will go totally into this second term. So it's 8x minus 5 times 1 8th of this is x minus 1. This is a method you may or may not have seen. I hope it makes sense to you. It's a very efficient method. And uh, I suppose you either like it or hate it. If you look in the description below the video... I actually have a link to a, an Excel workbook that I designed years ago, but I've tidied up a bit since. And uh, it's free to download from my website. There are no macros in it. It's clean, uh, but it has quite a number of tabs on the bottom. And among other things, it will print off sheets like this that have quadratics for you to factorise, and the answer's here. Uh, and if you keep pressing the F9 key, as I hope you can see on the screen now, uh, it just randomly generates quadratic equations for you. And you can practice over and over and over it without having to look up extra questions from other textbooks or answers in the back of the textbook. And you can even change the degree of difficulty, which I'll do right now on the screen. And you can see that if you make the highest factor a little bit larger, you can get some quite complex looking quadratics for you to practice. So as you get better, you can challenge yourself a bit more. Also, if you fold the answers out of sight when you work on them, that's a good thing. You can check your answers. But as you get better, it's a bit hard to do with non-monic. These ones, these are a bit more complicated. But certainly for monic quadratics, you should be able to hold these up uh, be between yourself and a parent or a teacher or a friend and... Uh, try to factorise them in your head and your friend can check the answer on the back and then you can turn it around and reverse the process. Uh, I've used this quite successfully in classes. Hand the sheets out, students work in pairs and uh, I, I normally wouldn't do non-monic 
quadratics with them, but certain mnemonic quadratics. Uh, there are 10 questions per page, and students got very good at doing these mentally and would do these 10 questions during a lesson and about the time it would take them to do two or three on paper. Uh, so very, very efficient learning technique. So please download it, have a try. If you like it, leave a comment below. If you like the video, leave a comment. Uh, certainly click on the like button, and I thank you very, very much for watching.